Hello, everyone. This is uh, Professor Joseph, and this is our third week, our third lecture uh, in week three on the uh, early church. And this will be the concluding lecture on the early church uh, of Christianity from from the uh, time of Christ until 500 CE. So today we're going to talk about the heresies, orthodoxy, the councils, and the creeds. And of course, this is an introductory uh, lecture. Uh, we're, we're giving a broad overview of Christianity and, and not going into great detail in this. So let us begin. And uh, we, from where we were last uh, in the last lecture, we now come to Trinitarianism, which was the debate about God. We already spoke about uh, uh, some of the other early heresies like Gnosticism. The Council of Nicaea's decla declaration that Christ was fully divine without compromising his humanity raised some fundamental theological questions. If Christ was God, how did this shape Christian thinking? Some have suggested that second century Christianity was really binatarian, committed to the belief in God the Father and God the Son, and while well, kind of ignoring the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's the opinion of the author of the book we're using, uh, Alistair McGrath, that the early church was implicitly Trinitarian, while being reluctant to formalize this until clarifications had been achieved on some important points, particularly about the nature of Christ. The Numa, the Numa Tomakoi were a group of writers who were known as the opponents of the spirit, led by Eustasius of Sebaste. These writers argued that neither the person nor the works of the spirit were to be regarded as having the status or the nature of a divine person. In response to this, writers such as Athanasius and Basil of Caesarea made an appeal to the formula which had been by then had become universally acceptable for baptism. Since the time of the New Testament, uh, the Christians were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Athanasius argued in his letter to Serapion that the baptismal formula clearly pointed to the Spirit sharing the same divinity as the Father and the Son. This argument eventually prevailed. However, some early Christian writers were hesitant to speak openly of the Spirit as God, and that this practice was not sanctioned by Scripture. Gregory of Nazianzus in 380 conceded that the Orthodox theologians were uncertain if the Holy Spirit was an activity, a creator, or a God. The heresy of modalism. To make sense of the discussion that took place around the time of the Council of Nicaea, we need to go back to the early third century concerning the Trinity. The view known as modalism held that the divinity of Christ and the Holy Spirit is to be explained in terms of three different ways or modes of divine self-revelation. That's where he gets his name modalism. There is thus no, thus no difference between the three persons of the Trinity, except for their appearance and chronological location. For modalism, the one God is revealed in three different ways at three different points in salvation history. Traditores, those who hand over. Under the edict of February 303, Christian leaders were ordered to hand over their books to be burned. These Christian leaders who handed over their books to be destroyed in this way came to be known as traditores, which is Latin for those who handed over their books. Uh, and of course, this word eventually came to mean traitor in English uh, to hand over. So it's interesting to know that it goes all the all this way back. The matter became divisive in Roman North Africa when a traditor was consecrated as bishop. Many local Christians were outraged that such a person should have been allowed to be involved in this consecration. 
they declared that they could not accept the new bishop's authority. The Donatists were a group who believed that the entire sacramental system of the Catholic Church had become corrupt on account of the lapse of its leaders. How could the sacraments be validly administrated by people who were tainted in this way? It was therefore necessary to replace these people with more acceptable leaders who had remained firm in their commitment to faith under persecution. It was also necessary to rebaptize and reordain all those who had been baptized and ordained by those who had lapsed. Augustine responded to the Donatist challenge with a theory of the church, which he believed was more firmly grounded. Augustine emphasized the sinfulness of Christians. The, the church is not meant to be a pure body, a society of saints, but a mixed body. Uh, in Latin, that's a corpus per mixtum of saints and sinners. And he used two biblical parables to justify his point of view. One was the parable of the net, which catches many fishes, good and bad, and the other one was the parable of the wheat and the weeds, uh, which a enemy comes and sows weed, uh, weeds seeds among the wheat, and uh, the the uh, servants of the owner want to pluck out the weed, the weeds, and the owner says, "No, leave it alone, because you might pluck out good wheat and damage it thereby." So let's wait to. The, wait until the harvest and then we'll separate the wheat from the chaff. And Jesus interprets this as saying, wait till the end of the age and the angels of God will sort through the wheat and the weeds, uh, which I think is a very interesting uh, idea that we should give some thought to. So the separation takes place at the end of time, not in history. It's not our job to try to judge between good wheat and good and bad bad uh, weeds our job is just simply to be faithful so in what sense can the church meaningfully be designated as holy for augustine the holiness in question is not that of the members but of christ the church cannot be a congregation of saints in the, this world in that its members are contaminated with original sin. However, the church is sanctified and made holy by Christ, a holiness which will be perfected and finally realized at the last judgment. Augustine responded by arguing that Donatism had laid excessive emphasis upon the qualities of the human agent and have given insufficient weight to the grace of Jesus Christ. a little bit like pietism. The Pelagian controversy erupted in the early 5th century, brought a cluster of questions concerning the human nature, sin, and grace into sharp focus. Pelagius, a British monk who arrived in Rome at the end of the 4th century, was distressed by the religious and moral nominalism of many Christians, a little bit like a similar scene from the movie Luther when Martin Luther makes his first visit to Rome. He advocated personal moral reform. Christians ought to be morally upright. That seems self-evident. Such suggestions were relatively uncontroversial. Uh, the controversy comes as Pelagian, Pelagius set his demand for moral renewal and perfection within a theological framework that seemed to his opponents to convert Christianity into a religion of moral achievement. Several issues were particularly controversial. Pelagius declared that humanity was free to choose to act morally and was therefore under an absolute moral obligation to do so. It was a matter of self-discipline and the exercise of the will over the lower human nature. Augustine disagreed, arguing that human nature was damaged and corrupted by sin. As a result, human freedom was limited. I will add to that that this is perhaps where Augustine develops his doctrine of original sin as being something genetic that's passed down uh, through, the, the, through the woman, really, through the seed, uh, not 
knowing that the uh, about modern understanding of DNA that both the, the male and the female contribute to the to the human embryo. Uh, obviously, the succession of heresies that arose in the first centuries of Christianity encouraged or required extensive debate among Christian leaders, and when they were able to arrive at resolutions, required precise written statements about what they agreed to. The theological debates of the early church emphasized the importance of creeds, which are authorized, consensual, public statements of the essentials of Christian belief. Short creedal statements can be found both in the New Testament and the literature of the apostolic age, such as the following. I handed to you as a first importance what I had in turn received, that Christ died for our sins and according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. That's St. Paul's voice speaking in 1 Corinthians 15. Two important creeds in early Christianity are the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. In many churches, you will hear the an alternation of these two creeds being cited uh, on Sunday morning worship. The first to be considered is the Nicene Creed, which was first formulated by the bishops assembled at the Council of Nicaea in 325. This gathering was con convened by Constantine, who wanted to ensure that the unity of the empire was not disrupted by divisions within the church. This creed is clearly shaped by the Arian controversy and is concerned to emphasize the orthodox understanding of the identity of Jesus Christ over and against Arius and his supporters. So the Nicene Creed is as follows. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of all things, seen and unseen, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten from the Father, only begotten, that is, from the substance of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things in heaven and on earth come into being, who on the account of us human beings and our salvation came down and took flesh, becoming a human being, he suffered and rose again on the third day, ascended into the heavens, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. And in the Holy Spirit, as for those who say that there, as for those that say that there was when he was not, and before being born he was not, and he came into existence out of nothing, or who declare that the Son of God is of a different substance or nature or is subject to alteration or change, the Catholic and Apostolic Church condemns these. The Apostles' Creed, in marked contrast, did not rest on an imperial authority, nor did it originate with any council, but it appears to have emerged by consensus and use over an extended period of time in much the same way that the, as the canon of the New Testament. The most striking difference between the Apostles and the Nicene Creeds is that the former knows, shows no signs of a polemical agenda. It does not define Christianity over and against any other position in the way that the Nicene Creed so clearly defines the orthodoxy in the face of the Arian threat. The Apostles' Creed derives its name from a 5th century belief that each of the 12 apostles contributed a statement to the text. And the Apostles' Creed is as follows, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. And now this brings us to Nestorius. This is a painting of a statue of Nestorius. The Nestorian controversy was a view of... Uh, two loosely or disconnected natures. And Nestorius was the bishop of Constantinople. He condemned the use of the Greek term theot theotokos, the bearer of God, 
which had come to be widely used as a title for Mary, both expressing her own special place in the purposes of God and reaffirming the identity of Jesus as God. The story in churches spread from Persia to India to China, which is pretty amazing how widespread uh, the story in Christianity was. Contemporary Nestorians are represented by the Church of the East or the Persian Church, usually referred to in the West as the Assyrian or Nestorian Church. Most of its members live in Iraq, Syria, and Iran. Uh, that's got to be tough. So the Nestorian heresy claims Jesus was two separate persons. A divine person here on the left and a human person on the right. Two natures coexisting. The monophysite controversy held that Chalcedon had developed a position that failed to do justice to the divinity of Christ. Many in Alexandria felt that Chalcedon had not adequately safeguarded Christ's divinity. Modern Miaphysite churches, such as the Armenian Apostolic, the Coptic Orthodox, the Ethiopian Orthodox, and the Syrian Orthodox churches are now generally accepted by Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, and Protestant Christendom as authentic Christian in nature. Even though they changed the term Miaphysite from Monophysite, it doesn't really signify much in terms of a change in doctrine. So in monophysite, how do I pronounce that? Monophysitism. Jesus only had one divine nature. His human nature was synthesized into his divine nature, kind of like a Borg on Star Trek. If you watch Star Trek, uh, you will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. So monophysitism basically doesn't uh, is the opposite of Nestorianism, which held that there were two disconnected natures of human and divine. Monophysitism says there's only one divine nature and the human nature has been subsumed or absorbed into the divine nature. It was also condemned by the Council, Council of Chalcedon and it's seen as a heresy by most Christian denominations. And I'm back. There's a nice picture of Theodosius. Oh, I lost my spot there. Okay. Uh, and I think down on the lower right, you have uh, Arius, or perhaps that's Nestorius, and uh, uh, Athanasius. And that's all we have for today. We have now concluded our uh, overview of the early church from the time of Christ through 500 and the, of the common era. And uh, we, did, we didn't talk too much about the creeds, but the creeds emerged out of this tension and dialectic between orthodoxy and her heresy. And so this brings us to 500 of the Common Era, uh, at where we begin to move into the medieval period and the Church of the Middle Ages. And so we will return to that next week and begin our survey of the medieval Christianity. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I'll talk to you next week. God bless and take care.